Hi everyone, and welcome back to Winter Storytime with Literacy Quebec and me, Uma God. I am a drag queen, but I am also a qualified early childhood educator with years of experience in preschools, which means I've read a lot of stories with children, but also with adults. So I wanted to invite all of you together with me and Literacy Quebec to, to learn some new stories all about this, the winter time. So uh, for those of you that maybe have seen a couple of the other stories, you might have heard me talk about a folk tale. Now a folk tale is a very, very, very old story that might not have been written down for a very long time. So the only way that people learned this story, instead of reading it, was to tell it. So they would tell stories about all kinds of things in the world. About friendships, about the nature around them, about living in a particular place, about magical creatures. Those are called folk tales, which were not written down. They were told from one person to another, and that's how they existed. But I have a funny question for all of you today. What if you learned a story and you wanted to tell it to somebody, but they did not speak the same language as you. Here in Montreal, where I am, lots of people speak English and lots of speak, people speak French. But what if we don't speak one of those languages? How could we tell a story? Well, I have a special book today that looks at exactly that. So what it is, is... Snow Doves by Nancy Hartree and Gabrielle Grimard. So this is a special story. It says on the back, a wordless story of overcoming our fears and finding friendship. So that's interesting. There's no words. And it's funny, I'm looking at the back of the book and there's a little, there's a little kitty cat on the back of the book. And I don't know if you all can hear, but my kitty cat right now is walking around the apartment and he's singing to us. He's going, meow, meow, meow. <laughs> so I'm sorry if he interrupts us. He just really wants to get involved with storytelling. He wants to tell us a story. But I don't speak cat. So what's a way that we could maybe learn a story from someone that speaks a different language? Let's find out. If we look inside, there are no words on the pages. This is a picture book. And by looking at all of the pictures, we can figure out what the story is. So let's get started. So if we use our great big eyes, we can look here and we can see that there is somebody here who is named Sammy. This is Sammy. And Sammy just moved to a new home. It's snowing outside. And he looks very concerned. He looks very worried. People are moving in his furniture. And look, there's another little child outside. Hmm, and their name is Joy. So this is Sammy and Joy. But snow is coming down. And look at this, the little kitty cat right here. And look at the great big spooky shadow that that kitty cat is casting. Oh my goodness. And here we go. So now we have Joy coming over to see Sammy. And Sammy's lifting up the window and listening, and Joy is saying, Hi! We can see Joy's hand moving. Hi! And now Joy is pointing, pointing and saying, Do you want to come outside? I don't think they speak the same language. Joy and Sammy do not speak the same language. So Joy is using body language. And body language is something when we move our body a special way, when we point, or when we put our hand up like this, it means stop. Or when we move our hand like this, it means come over here. So Joy is using body language to tell Sammy, do you want to go outside? But Sammy doesn't look very interested. Sammy's body language, his face, is going, I don't think that Sammy wants to do it. Sammy's got his arms crossed over his chest. Ooh, it's too cold. So, oh, Joy looks very disappointed. Joy goes home and talks to their parent and says, well, there's someone over there who's worried about being cold. I don't think he has any clothes to wear outside. He doesn't have a jacket. So look, Joy goes into their closet 
and finds all kinds of clothes that they could maybe lend to Sammy. Isn't that nice? That's so lovely. And we're learning all of this just by looking at these photos, at these pictures, these illustrations, because they are drawings. Well, tuck, tuck, tuck. There's Joy at the door, and when Joy comes in, there's a mountain of clothes to try on. Sammy tries on a green jacket that is far too big, a purple parka that's kind of floppy, and a cape, and a party hat, and a big, big hat with, flop, uh, with floppy flaps on his side. Oh, but look! Look! Sammy's face never looked very impressed. He does, doesn't seem to like it very much. But this one here, he's smiling. I think we found the right one. And look, now we have Sammy has boots, a scarf, a hat, mittens, and a coat. And Joy is saying, yay! So now let's go outside. Joy is pushing Sammy right out the door. And Sammy says, but wait, I saw a big scary monster outside. Do you remember what this is? It's the shadow from the cat. So this cat here was making this big scary shadow. So Joy says, oh, no, no, no. That's just my cat. Well, Sammy, Sammy is pointing outside. So again, body language, pointing. And what's this here in this picture? <laughs> so what do we think Sammy is worried about? I think Sammy is worried about getting cold. And then Joy says, no, no, we can go outside because we're nice and warm. There's all kinds of animals that live outside all year round. You're going to be okay. Well, let's look at their body language. So we see a big smile, big rosy cheeks, and Joy is pointing off into the distance saying, let's go there. And Sammy looks, hmm... A big word, reluctant. Reluctant means maybe he doesn't want to. Oh, but see again, see, this is my kitty cat. That's not scary. So Joy and Sammy decide that they are going to start building a snowman. And look, the cat is even helping. They give him a face and Joy lends the snowman her hat. They get into a snowball fight and they're having lots of fun. Oh, what's this? What does Joy want to do now? What does Joy want to do now? She wants to go tobogganing or sledding. And Sammy says, what does that mean? It means no, 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 no. Well, they try it out and look, Sammy's face, Ooh! and the kitty cat's face, I don't think that they're having a lot of fun, but then look, finally the cat jumps away and it's easier for Sammy to hold on to the sled. So I think he's having a great time now. And all of this is all happening. They're not talking. They have no words. They can't share their words. So they are doing it all by trusting each other and trying something and using body language. And for us, we are learning the story through the pictures. So there they are, whoosh, flying through the air on their toboggan. Oh, and they spill right off and they're still having a great time. Now, what's this here? Joy took out, is it a snack? Did Joy bring snacks? Those are sunflower seeds and they're putting them in into Sammy's hands. Oh, they must, they're probably having a snack after such a, a fun trip on a toboggan. <gasps> wow. They are not going to eat those seeds. Sammy and Joy are not going to eat those seeds because they are for the chickadees. The chickadees are birds that we often see in the wintertime. And they sing a special song and it goes, chickadee dee 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 chickadee dee 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 That's why they're named chickadees is because that's the song they sing. And so they put sunflowers in their hands and look at all of them coming to eat with Sammy and Joy. What's this? I'm going to let you look at this picture for a moment so maybe you can guess what's going on here. What can you see? I see, I see they look like birds. 
but they're big, 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 and they're bright colors. I don't think that they're real birds. I think, I think Joy and Sammy are looking up into the sky, and they are seeing Aurora Borealis. Aurora Borealis is a very big word for the Northern Lights. And the Northern Lights are special colors that we can see in the sky at nighttime in the North, in Canada, in the North Pole, in parts of Russia. They can see these lights in the sky and they are imagining that they are the wings on uh, the feathers of beautiful big birds flying through the sky. So they are imagining that. And it's been, that means that they went out when it was daytime and now they're coming back and it's nighttime. And we can see more of the beautiful Aurora Borealis birds or maybe they're clouds. Maybe they're clouds that they are imagining are birds. I don't know. But that's what's great is we can imagine because look, they even made some birds in the snow here. Sometimes people call them snow angels. When you lay down in the snow and you put your arms out like this and you go like this and it looks like you have wings. Well, maybe some people call them snow doves. Doves are a white bird. So maybe that's what they made. And they're heading home together and they are really good friends even though they don't speak the same language. Because they found ways to communicate, to talk to each other without words. So we learned through pictures and they learned through body language. What a lovely story. A lovely story with no words. So that was Snow Doves by Nancy Hartree and Gabrielle Grimard. So there we go. So that's one story for today. I hope that you enjoyed it very much and I think maybe we should read one more. So we are reading wintertime stories and I have another one right here. This one is called Song for the Snow. And this is a story by John Eric Lapano and Byron Eggenschweiler. Oh my goodness, I hope I pronounced their names right. So John Eric Lapano and Byron Eggenschweiler. So this is a special story uh, that asks, on the back it says, what can one person do to bring back the snow? Ooh, does that mean that the snow goes missing? hope not. Well, we can read the story together and find out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up and you can see here, my book is wearing a jacket. Is my book cold? I don't know. But this is actually a protective paper that goes around my book to keep it safe because books are very, very precious. When someone gifts us a book, when we get a book as a present, when we buy ourselves a book, when we borrow a book from school or from the library, we want to protect it. So the book jacket keeps the cover safe in case anything spills on it or if it gets bumped up against anything. While I'm reading the book, I take off the jacket and then I'll put it back on after to protect my precious book. But what's neat is under the book jacket, we have the same cover. So let's get started on this story called Song for the Snow. In early winter, Freya dreamed of the snow. So here we have a bird gliding over the snow. But wait, that's not a bird. That bird has a face. That's a human face. I think that's Freya. Freya had always loved the snow, how it covered everything in softness and dusted the trees like powdered sugar on her favorite spice cakes. That's, look, we can see here, this must be a fantasy, a fantasy, a dream that Freya is having where she is a beautiful bird that is warm in the snow and she's flying over the forest. And look, we can see spice cakes. There's a Swiss roll. There's a little cake. This cake even has two layers with icing in it. But they all have powdered sugar on top of them. So she's imagining in her head that she can see snow that is powdered sugar. Freya usually knew when the snow was coming. 
first, the air grew cold. Frost covered the grass and crunched under her feet. Her breath rose like smoke above her. This book has very beautiful words that describe the snow and the trees and the frost. They have beautiful words that describe it. But the snow hadn't come to Freya's town for a long time. For the past two winters, the air hadn't changed. The grass stayed wet with dew, and her breath remained invisible. Freya's memories of the snow were beginning to fade. She longed to see it again, to run and jump in it, and pack it in her hands. But look at this, all of this greenery. So Freya lives in a town where usually there is lots of snow, but there has not been snow. Oh, that would be terrible. She misses the snow. One morning, she asked her mother, when will it snow again? When it's cold, said her mother. Steam rose in swirls from her cup of coffee. Freya looked at her father. When will it be cold? Mm, someday, he said, crunching into his toast. The sound reminded Freya of her boots on the frozen ground. Maybe the snow is lost, she thought. So look at that. She is, it, there's no snow, but she's looking at her mother's coffee cup and she sees the steam rising up off of her coffee and it looks like her breath that rises up in the sky when she is cold outside. And her father is eating toast and it makes the same sound as when Freya walks on the snow. She misses the snow terribly. Freya went to the market with her father. She gazed at the cakes and imagined walking over their snowy tops, sinking her feet into the sugar, sledding down their frosted sides and skating over the glass plates. Just then, above the noise of the busy market, a soft, twinkling melody danced in Freya's ears. What beautiful words. So she's remembering, she's looking at the cakes and the, the cakes are covered in icing that remind her of the snow, the snow banks, the frosted sugar, the glass plates that look like ice. And then she hears twinkling notes dancing through the air. So she's imagining that the sound is dancing to her. <gasps> and under, in this tent at the bazaar, at the, at the, the market, what does she see? Drawn towards the tune, she came to a table of trinkets. Behind it, a woman was holding a beautiful snow globe. So a snow globe often has a music box that sings music to us. And then on top is a big glass ball. And inside, there is different scenes. So trees or houses or mountains, all kinds of things. And when you shake it up, the snow gets tossed around and it starts to snow down on whatever is inside. The woman was holding a snow globe. This song is a very old and special, the woman said. And she shook the globe and wound its silver key. Every winter for generations, our townspeople would sing this song. Some say it was the magic of the song that called the snow home. Freya stared with wonder as the swirling, sparkling flakes drifted down onto the tiny village inside. A gift, said the woman, passing the globe to Freya. Look at this beautiful snow globe. We can see all of these log cabins, all of these homes inside. The snow falling down on the trees, on the mountain. And then we can see here, here's the crank, the key that we can turn to make the music box inside make music. 
Shroom. On the way home, Freya held her new treasure close, playing the melody again and again. So there she is sitting in the car, listening to the music of the music box. At bedtime, she played it for her mother. I know this song, her mother said, closing her eyes. My grandmother sang it to us on nights when the snow was so deep, it felt like we'd disappear beneath it. Come home, snow, she sang. Fall from high, cover the trees and fill the sky. So that was the song that would come out of the, the music box. And so her mother remembers this song because her grandmother taught it to her. It's a song that was not written down. They shared it by telling the song to each other. And we can see there's the little music notes that are floating out, out of the window into the night sky. The next morning, Freya work, woke early. She took the globe and went out into the dark winter morning. Freya shook the globe and wound its silver key. She closed her eyes and sang the words her mother had sung the night before. Come home, snow, she whispered. But the snow did not come. So there she is sitting with her snow globe as the sun was rising, just creaking up through the dawn, pushing away the nighttime, and the, the tiny music notes floating off into the sky, but the snow did not come. The next morning, Freya tried again. And the next morning, and the next. But still, the snow did not come. Oh, there's Freya laying down on the ground, looking up at the sky, feeling so frustrated. She's frustrated. Frustration is a feeling when you feel angry and tired at the same time. Or maybe angry and sad and tired at the same time. Frustration makes you want to go... Ugh! Ugh! So she lay down on the ground. On the radio, Freya heard someone say that the snow would not come this year and that it might be gone forever. She stared out at the flat gray sky. Maybe the snow was too far away to hear her song. Maybe she wasn't singing loud enough. From the radio, the full, rich sound of a choir sang out. Oh, look at this. There is only one leaf left on a tree, but there is no snow. So it's just cold and gray. That night, Freya dreamed of a great flock of birds. They flew up past the trees and over the valley, carried by the wind, landing on far away, snow-covered mountains. And look at this, we can see here what a beautiful illustration, what a beautiful drawing this is. Because we can see Freya here, she is sleeping, but she is also the mountains. The green mountains with the green forest trees, and all of the birds are flying away to go to the snow-covered mountain. The next day, she carried the snow globe to school. She told her friends about the song's magic and sang the words as the melody played. Oh, and everybody seems to love this music box and this beautiful song that she is singing. Soon other children were singing the song at home as they sang distant memories of cozy snow-filled nights returned to their parents. The parents hummed the familiar tune as they went about their days. Slowly, the words came back to everyone in Freya's town. The, one, uh, the song once again filled their hearts and their homes. So we can see here, look, all of the children singing this song and all of the music notes passing from person to person, flying up into the sky. Even here at night, we can see them floating up into the sky. <gasps> 
Remember in my last story, I told you about Aurora Borealis, the northern lights that we see in the night sky? Well, now look. All of the music notes are floating up into the sky, and this is what Aurora Borealis looks like. Like a ribbon dancing in the sky. And here they are imagining that it is all made up of music. The song of the snow. Beautiful white rabbits. But look, if we go back to the first page where we see Freya on the hill, these rabbits are brown. Did you know that rabbits change color in the winter? Some rabbits go from being brown and in the winter they turn white to hide in the snow. Well, if they're changing to white, hmm. The story says, and then early one morning, before the stars faded, the wind changed. What's going to happen? <gasps> Freya went outside and breathed in deep. <sighs> the air was cold. Frost crunched under her feet. Her breath rose like smoke to the sky, and she began to sing. A single, lonely snowflake drifted into town. And then another. And another, and another, until the sky was completely filled with snow. The snow dusted the branches of trees sugar white, and the town disappeared beneath it. Look at all of this snow cascading down, all of this snow floating down all over the town. Snowflakes fell on Freya's hair. They settled on her eyelashes. They tickled her nose and brushed against her cheeks as she sang out her song to the snow. And there she is. We can see again her crunch, crunch, crunch footprints in the snow. And we can't even tell where her music notes are because they are so lost in all of the beautiful snow. And look, we can see all of the village then Enjoying the snow. Here we have somebody catching snow on their tongue. Someone sliding down the hill on, a, on an inner tube and on a sled. And children running in the forest. Families all up on the snow hill. And that is all because they remembered the song for the snow. So there we go. That's a beautiful story by John Eric Lepano and Byron Egel, uh, Egenschwiller. So there we go. That's a beautiful story that we've read together. I'm going to put my jacket back on my book to protect it. There we go. And so now, folks, I want to say thank you all so much for joining me for a winter story time. Again, I am Uma God, and I am here with Literacy Quebec. And you can join us every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m., for the month of December, where we will be reading special wintertime stories. I really enjoyed doing this together, and hopefully you did too. Remember, folks, that there are books out there for everyone on all kinds of beautiful subjects, and we are reading some of them together for this story time. So we've got funny books. We've got kind of books that are about sciencey stuff. We have folk tales. We have all kinds of things that we can read together, and we can share because during the winter, sometimes we get to spend a lot of time indoors with our family, cuddled up cozy with that blanket, and then we can read stories together, and it's a beautiful way to share time. So I hope you enjoyed sharing this time with me, because I had a wonderful time. We will see you again soon, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. here on the Literacy Quebec Facebook page. Thank you all so much.